the top five most overrated detailing techniques. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today we're gonna go over top five. We may even have a bonus one at the end. Stay tuned. But top five methods or techniques that they've uh, overstayed their welcome. Yeah, we're talking about car wash methods. We're talking about polishing methods, even ceramic coating tips. There's certain things that just take way too long out there. We think, our humble opinion, is that we've got better methods. So we're gonna say these are the most overrated methods out there. And we're gonna start with ceramic coating application. Right. The cross hatch. So the cross hatching. It's been done since ceramic coatings started 25 years ago. And it's a technique that works. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's wasting your time. It's wasting coating, it's causing high spots, and it's hard on your body. So let's break that down a little bit. First of all, what did I say? Wasting coating. So the first thing, it's wasting coating. And the reason it's wasting coating is you're putting a lot on there. And every time you stop, that's a potential high spot. Now, we favor the circular motion. And no, circular motions do not cause swirls. Uh, we apply in about an eight to 12 inch circle when we're applying. There's no eight to 12 inch circles on the car when we're done. There's no swirls. Swirls are actually a collection of straight lines that because your light is in one point, looks like a circle around them. But if you're to take a, like a lightsaber, just a very thin line over the top of it, and you're reflecting that thin line, you'll see it's all straight lines. I don't see a lot of people out there criticizing the circular coating application for causing swirls, although no. I'm sure that's something people might think out there. I think the whole dogma of wash in straight lines is probably why people end up applying ceramic coatings in these straight lines. Yeah. But another thing, and you know, it takes a while for this to catch up to you, is a lot of this <laughs> yeah. actually is hard on your shoulder. Right. I'm old. I don't like to have a sore body. So the ceramic coating applying in a circular motion is just easier on your body. There's no stopping and starting. There's just one continual easy motion. And how do you recommend people do this? Because I know it's easier to learn in person. Like I did circles and then a while back you noticed that I was kind of doing small circles. So you're like going bigger circles. And right. I was like, well if I go in bigger circles, am I gonna be missing things as I cross it? So how do you explain the circular motion, how to do it right? Well, if you look at what your polisher is doing, so your polisher is going in a circular motion and you're moving it across the paint at a certain speed, there's no missed areas, you're getting everything. And it's the same thing. Our applicator pad is roughly about three inches in diameter, 76 millimeters, and we're doing about an eight inch circle. So every time we do an eight inch circle, we move forward about two inches or about 50 millimeters, meaning that we're overlapping every time. So we're doing like the cross hatch, we're overlapping, but we're only doing it once. And we're going in one direction, it's easy, it's quick, it's a lot more efficient. That makes sense, that makes sense. And, and that just as a bonus tip is that the way we teach it is we apply yeah. specifically outside of the lines and then we level outside of the lines of each panel. Right. We're, we're building that redundancy into our application. Yeah, you know, let your inner two-year-old come out and color outside the lines. It's that simple? Yeah, it's that simple. All right, I wrote down our five plus a bonus. Stay tuned to the end for that. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good one. Yeah. I'm not gonna promise the world. No. It's not our favorite. It's not that we're saving the best to last, mm -hmm. but it's a pretty good one. All right, number two is applying pressure when polishing. And I know there's lots of people out there who disagree with you. So yeah. let's talk about why adding pressure to your machine is an overrated technique. A, it's hard on you. If it feels like you're working, you're doing something wrong. Secondly, it's very hard on the pads. And if your pads start cupping, if the, the Velcro is deformed, that's a sign you're putting too much pressure on your pads. They're, they're actually paying for the pads, right? Yeah, they're paying, you're paying for the pads. So you're destroying pads willingly by putting pressure on them. Exactly, we're trying to protect your, your purchases here. Right. Make them last longer. And the other thing is, pressure was a good thing. When we were working on lacquer paints, we haven't had lacquer paints in decades. We're working on plastic. That's what the clear coat is. It's simply a form or a sheet of plastic that's over the car. And when we apply heat to plastic, it softens. When we soften the plastic, the abrasive, instead of going across the surface and shearing or taking off a little bit of the paint, which is what we're doing when we're polishing, the abrasive, now that it's got this sort of gooey, plasticky stuff underneath it, and we don't perceive it as gooey, but on a microscopic level, it actually is. 
the abrasive is actually grabbing and rolling, grabbing and rolling, grabbing and rolling. So it's not effective anymore. And then by doing that, it creates more friction, creates more heat, and it just exacerbates. Yeah, exactly. Exacerbates. Thank you, the problem. So what if I'm trying to remove a defect though? Don't I have to add pressure to make no. sure it goes away? No, just use the proper pad and the proper tool to remove that. Well, what if I'm using the wool pad and our gold standard polish as our heater comes on on this cold Omaha evening? Yeah. I'm not sure when you'll be watching this. Could be summertime. If it's summer right. of 2024, leave a comment down below. I'll send you a free gift and that free gift is thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But no. Uh, uh, but no, but what if I want to get a defect out and the gold standard polish at speed two uh, with our wool pad isn't working. So I'm going to go to speed five and I'm going to hammer down. Yeah. That's going to give me the result, right? No, you're actually going to slow down the cut. The more pressure you apply, the more heat you generate, the slower the work will get done. You have a feeling that you're accomplishing more. It feels like you're doing more. You're not. What if you want more cut than it's giving you on speed two? Like what if you just can't get that scratch out? Then what do you tell folks? I'm talking about the real world where you're using the method as we teach it and something's not going the way that it looked on the internet. And right. I don't want you to throw the baby out with the bathwater and be like, well, that's not working. Ivan must be lying, right? Because the next thing you're going to try, if you're me, I remember this is, yeah. I better put more pressure on. I better ramp the speed up on my machine. Yeah. And whether it was swelling the paint or whether it actually got it out, it sometimes did work. Yeah, sometimes it does. But you also have to look at it another way. Do I really need to remove that defect? And as detailers, we see it as a defect. The customer may not even know that it's there. And in reality, you're not removing the defect. You're removing all the paint or all the clear coat around the defect down to the level of the defect. So you're actually damaging the paint. Absolutely, and it may be something that you're the only one in the world who sees it. Maybe it's your paint. Nobody else sees it. Shiny scratches are the goal, right? Exactly. We're trying to teach preservation over perfection. So pressure is not your friend. And sometimes it may work, sometimes it may swell the paint in the moment and it, it, will, it will reappear, these scratches will later. Yeah. Um, but we can give you a safe method to get shiny paint where you're not gonna risk damaging your clear coat. It's finite, it's not going to last forever. And if you abuse it and you remove too much of it, it's gone. And if you have that one deep scratch, you can try the 555 method. So there'll be a link down below about the 555 method. But the 555 method, it's a 21 millimeter, or in our case, a 25 millimeter polisher, yep. wool pad, a spray of the polish, and you're putting five pounds of pressure for five seconds on speed five. We're gonna to get to some car washing techniques in just a second. So yeah. don't think that we're getting too advanced on you here. Right. Uh, so stay, stay with us. But there's one more polishing technique that I almost forgot that I used to use. Yeah. And it's swapping my pad after every panel because I wanted that perfect finish. Yeah, exactly. I wanted the perfect finish. So I would do one panel and I'd say, I've been cleaning it with compressed air, but it's been compromised. It needs to go into the pile of pads that I will regret creating later when I have to clean these out with a pressure washer. Cleaning pads, the old fat, like that is, a, that is so right. time consuming. So first of all, three things he said there. Cleaning the pads with compressed air. Do you like breathing dust? I don't. And your pads really, really don't like you when you're using compressed air because the little uh, membranes that are between the cells, when you use compressed air, you're blowing them apart and you're actually destroying your pads. They may still look fine, but you're actually destroying your pads. The other thing that he said is clean them with a pressure washer. That's just as bad as compressed air. So those are two of the things. The third thing is ripping the pad off. And that's the main thing. When you're ripping the pad off, especially if the pad is warm. So you just finished polishing. That pad is actually, the foam is warm, it's soft, and it's at a danger point. And you're ripping it off. And if your Velcro is good in your machine, it takes a bit of force to rip that off. And it's hot, you're usually. Yeah, you're damaging the pad, you're damaging the Velcro. And before you know it, your backing plate isn't holding the pads anymore. That's one thing. But the time that you're spending removing the pad, getting another pad, centering, oh, it's not quite centered, let me put it back on, and then polishing, you do just that one section, and then you're starting over. And every time you need to prime the pad and you need to get it ready, it takes less time to use your pad washer as you're going through the process. And another video link below, even if you don't have a pad washer, we teach you how to clean your pad with, without a pad washer and keep it damp. 
a damp pad, and I don't care what polish you're using, try the polish with a damp, not wet, a damp pad. And you will see a big difference in the cut. It's gonna cut better because the pad is cooler. It's gonna cut easier because now the pad, that moisture actually softens the pad, and the pad is not wet. When you spin the pad out at full speed on your machine, you actually have less than one gram of water remaining in the pad. And it balances the machine. On a dual action machine, it's actually really interesting. It will spin the water out until it's perfectly balanced and then it stops spinning water out. So it's a very interesting concept. But once you try it, once you understand that, hey, this is actually working. And it's actually speeding you up because you're getting more cut from your pad, therefore you're spending less time on the panel. You're getting more life out of your pads. Uh, in my shops, we put a pad on a machine. The only time it left that machine is when it was time to go in the garbage. And that was 10, 15 cars later. I, I was just reminded of a former version of myself. We had uh, Luke from Ceramic Coatings of Omaha, or Omaha Ceramic Coatings in today. Yeah. Do you remember which name is this? Luke Hayward. Luke Hayward, but is it Omaha Ceramic, Ceramic Coatings. Well, this Omaha is his wife's car, yeah. He's over here. I don't know when the video is going to come out where we ceramic coated his already coated car. So that's an interesting question. Can I ceramic coat my coated car? Yes, and we demoed how to do it. But a couple of things as we were chatting off camera reminded me of me, Ivan. He's like, he's like, yeah, I, I have the pad washer, but I never use it. Me? Yeah. I bought the pad washer, thought I'd use it, went back to the compressed air. <laughs> yeah. And he was telling me how he swaps the pad out after every panel. I'm like, I used to do that. Yeah. Like. In about two hours today, I can't remember how long it took, but we were walking, talking, filming, and everything. We washed, decon, water spot remover, polished, ceramic coated this thing, and he was shocked that it could be done in a day. My former self would have been shocked it could be done in a day. It's so doable, but it's not doable when you're doing all these things that you think the internet detailers tell you to do exactly. because it looks cool. Like, <clears throat> use a pad washer. Yeah. Don't swap out the pads. Just, it's an overrated as method. As simple as that. As simple as that. You really just need one pad yep. per job. One, oh, one pad for five or six jobs, for that matter. Well, yeah, but like maybe you're going to do a two-step. You could do oh, yeah, wool, exactly. one pad, clean as you go, and then you know, rotary yeah. jeweling pad or yellow waffle for your second step. All right, so swap pad every panel, overrated. Pressure when polishing, overrated cross-hatching when you apply coatings, overrated. The two-bucket method when washing. So the two-bucket method, and I'll add a little bonus in this one as well, but the two-bucket method, the traditional two-bucket method is you take your pressure washer, you wet the car down, then you take your foam cannon, you foam the car, then you take your two buckets, one with just water in it, one with the soap, and then with that two-bucket method, you dip it in the soap, you go over a panel, you bring it back to the rinse bucket to take the grit off the, the, uh, the wash media, then you put it back in your soapy bucket, you go back to the car. It takes a lot of time. We use what we affectionately call the foam rinse foam method. And that is, first of all, we don't hit it with a pressure washer while it's dirty. That is actually a potential scratch risk. You're taking 1,500, 2,000 PSI to that little piece of dirt and moving it across the paint until eventually the water gets below it and dislodges it. For some reason, when you say pounds per square inch, it yeah. seems to like drive that point home more. Too. Right, yeah. Just so, thinking about like what's actually happening on the paint with that pressure washer if you yeah. haven't pre-treated the paint. So to put it in context, if you have a 1500 PSI pressure washer, that means in one square area, or one square inch, or 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters, you have 1,500 pounds in that square. Now, the jet is a little bigger than that. It's bigger than one square inch. So you're reducing it a little bit, but still you're moving that dust and dirt across the surface. Instead, we foam it first. Let the incredible suds do its thing. Start to emulsify the dirt. Get in there. Add some lubrication. Lift the dirt off the surface. Sort of a, a pre-soak, uh, pre as some people like to call it. Then you bring out your hose or pressure washer. Foam, rinse, foam. If then, at that point you want, yeah, I, I just, I'm fast forwarding here, but yeah. if at that point you want to use two buckets, you can. It's up to you. Right. But now that we've foamed, we've rinsed, there's no more grit on the car. There's traffic film, you know, there's a little few things there, but not much. Then so we do, foam wait, again. Do we remove the traffic film first and then what's what left is the grit? 
I think that's the way you've described it in the past. No, we're, we're removing the grit. What's left is the traffic film. Okay, so the grit comes off first. Yeah, so the, the grit, anything that can scratch your paint is now gone. Yes, and it's been removed safely on that right. bed of suds and everything. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now we foam it. Then once it's foamed, now we take our wash media out of the foamy wash bucket and wash it again. And that's when we're doing our contact wash. And the little bonus I talked about. A lot of people do this. You see it, especially on the Instagram and places like that, TikTok. They'll foam the car. So they're just foaming the car. Then they take that fancy little brush and go around the emblem, go around the door handle and all that. What are they doing to the grit that's on the paint with that brush? Yeah, they're scratching around those areas. Ah, you can't tell. It's around the emblem. Right, exactly. It looks good on the internet. Yeah, exactly. So if you foam, rinse, Foam again, then bring out your fancy little brushes. Yeah, foam, rinse, foam. Or if you want to use rinseless wash, which many people say is the best rinseless they've ever used. It has exceptional cleaning power. Pre-spray rinseless wash. Pressure wash it off. Pre-spray rinseless wash again. You'd be amazed how well that cleans. Yeah, so, or we could call it chemical, rinse, chemical. I like foam, rinse, foam. Yeah, it sounds So you could foam rinse this as well. Yeah. I like foaming our rinse wash. I think it's closer to a 32 to 1 dilution that you're really going to get good foam out of your... You're going to get foam, but now you're wasting product. It's 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 not economical. No. Let's say you don't have incredible sludge. You're like, I feel like foam today, right? If you feel like foam and you're a DIYer and you just want to have fun, do whatever you want. Ivan knows how to teach the professional to be efficient, but there is such a thing as just a love for foam just if you just want to have fun today and clean your car. Right. Um, that's when I recommend foaming the rinseless. Yeah. Is there a utility otherwise to foaming the rinseless? No, it's just for looks. It's just for looks. Yeah. <laughs> it pretty much is. But, you know, looks is a big deal in this yeah. world. Let's be honest with ourselves. All right, so we are now on to clay bar. I mean, a clay bar, over or underrated? What say you out there? We think it's, uh, we think it's overrated. Right. So clay bar still has its place, very, very small place in the detailing industry. And that is heavy, heavy overspray very heavily contaminated vehicles that you're not going to get it off with anything else. That's its only place. For regular maintenance, for just doing a detail, use a perforated synthetic decontamination towel. It makes so much more sense. First of all, it lasts a lot longer. Secondly, it costs so much less. Third, it's more efficient. You've got a much bigger surface area that you're working with. Uh, And clay bars, if you drop the clay bar, you're throwing it in the garbage. You drop the perforated synthetic decontamination dial, you put it in your wash bucket, keep going. Yeah, you rinse it out underwater, put it in the wash bucket. It'll last you hundreds of washes if yeah. you take care of it. And we have plenty of videos on the PSD towel, perforated synthetic decontamination towel. AKA You're gonna clay f- towel. find it as a fine grade clay towel on our website because that's what people search for it as. And uh, yeah. you know, we have SEO and we want to make sure people can find it. So uh, there's a link to that below, actually a detailing 101 video on, on what is it and how to use it. but. Really, it's just uh, it's a game changer. I, I have it in my bucket on every wash because I like it for the windshield and the front bumper. Yeah. Even if I'm not deconning the vehicle, there may be some bug guts that I'm going after. It's just a real easy way to do that Yeah. if, uh, if my wash process doesn't get to them. Exactly. Another myth that surrounds the clay towel is that it's going to scratch and mar your paint. And if you're not careful, yes, you can scratch and mar your paint. If you're careful and follow the way we teach to use it and with the chemicals we suggest to use with you're not going to scratch and mar your paint. So what are the key important principles when using our decon towel to prevent marring? Okay, A, proper lubrication. And that lubrication, we have five choices. We have incredible suds. We have rinseless wash. We have quick beads. We have ceramic gloss. And my favorite, iron remover. Wow, you had that in your head, five different ways to lubricate. Yes. Almost as if you've thought about this or said it before. Uh, Yeah, we've uh, written it in the comments below many times, which is great. We love answering your questions, by the way. If you have questions, please leave them below. We always love answering them. One common theme, though, here is built-in lubrication. Lubrication should be intertwined with common sense. Right. So think about your, your process, no matter what situation comes up in detailing is, do I have proper lubrication if I'm touching my paint with anything. If it's a wash mitt, right? We foam. We rinse it off. We foam again. The wash mitt's in my foamy wash bucket. Look at all that built-in risk mitigation on the front end and then lubrication with the the foam and the foamy wash suds uh, on my mitt as I hit the paint. So that's just, that's every time think, where's my lubrication and scratch risk? And and use, use that common sense as you detail. Right. Now, the other part of this is the towel itself, 
it's rather large. We want you to fold it in four. We tell you to fold it in four for a reason. Pressure points. Pressure points with anything you're using. If you apply pressure, even with a wash mitt, if you apply a lot of pressure on the wash mitt, yeah, you can scratch your paint. And again, it comes down to common sense. But by folding the towel, we reduce the amount of pressure points. And the towel, you don't take a dry towel. You take the towel from your wash bucket. When you start washing the car, put it in your wash bucket. Let it soak, let it absorb that beautiful lubrication. And then when you're going to take it to your paint, you fold it in four, don't wring it out. You want it nice and drippy. Put a spray of whatever you're using. Now, we also, when we wash the car with rinse us with incredible suds, we don't rinse it off. When we know we're gonna be decontaminating it, we leave that lubrication there. And then, if you want to just gloss up your paint and have fun, you can use either quick beads or ceramic gloss. If you want to truly deep decontaminate, then a sprayer of iron remover on your towel, sprayer of iron remover on the panel, marry the two up, go from there. No pressure whatsoever. Uh, you know, I think I've said this before, it might be a common theme in some of our videos, but if it feels like you're working, you're doing something wrong. Absolutely, and it is so much work to use a clay bar now that I'm used to this decon towel. Yeah. It's like, I don't even want to try it that way anymore. <laughs> no. Because the towel is so easy, and when you have lubrication, it's easier. And iron remover is gonna be my first choice, you know, in terms of a good deep decon, but like for a maintenance wash, let's say you've been taking care of your vehicle, how often could I use ceramic gloss or quick beads as a lube for my decon towel? As often as you want. Exactly. If, you, if you're in the mood to decon your paint once a week, it's fine. You don't need it. It's not going to degrade your wax or sealant. It's not going to mess with your ceramic coating. It's not going to mar the paint up if you use proper lubrication. So you can do it as often as you want. Right. There's no need to do it once a week. No, exactly. Obviously. Yeah. But if you, let's say you're in Florida and you got love bugs. Uh, you, you want know. those off as soon as possible. Yeah. So you could use the towel on your front bumper after every wash. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can. All right. There's more to say there, but I think we've about covered it. All right. Here's our bonus one. How do you apply tire shine out there? What's the latest marketing gimmick that you've been sold? Is it some kind of hexagon foam pad? Is it a little applicator? I mean, what other options are there out there, Ivan? A uh, microfiber block. There's all sorts of different things. And my personal favorite, and it's what we show in a lot of our videos, is just to use a flag tip nylon brush. We have a salt and pepper or black and white nylon brush. It's a relatively stiff bristle, but with a flag tip. So it holds the tire lotion on there and it's extremely efficient with the product. We'll start with three or four sprays on the brush and then every tire after that, you're just putting one spray on the brush. And it's easy to control. You can do those big knobby tires, you can do the low profile tires. You're not getting tire dressing on the wheel, you're just getting it on the tire. It's just a nice, easy way to do it. It's simple, it's efficient. So those little blocks that are hard to hold on to, or they're too small, or they have- And they're gonna be easy to lose. Like yeah. the beauty of the brush is you just get a nail in your garage, yeah, and you exactly. get a hook or something better than that, you know, but like, you just has a place every, every detail, it just goes back on the wall. Yeah, and you know, some of those foam blocks, tires now are not a smooth sidewall like we used to have. There's all sorts of writing and little lines and sipes and all sorts of things that, make it so that you're sitting there with that little foam applicator going on oh, and working it in and trying to get into those lines. Where's the brush? One pass and it's done. Absolutely. Well, I just was listening to see if you had anything else to say. No. It's been a long day in the shop, but we love talking about this stuff. What are your overrated detailing techniques? Things that you've moved on from? They don't have to be ours. We're always learning just like we're always uh, answering your comments. So we'll have a discussion there and, and maybe we'll learn something new. Yeah, exactly. And you know, we release videos on a regular scheduled basis. So when we do, we always do it as a premiere. And that premiere allows us to chat with you live as the video is being premiered or being released. So every time you see a premiere, you know that you can come to the chat and say hi, talk to us, talk to other enthusiasts. There's usually around 100, 150 people there that are just spending time, having fun together, and talking detailing. That's what it should be, is fun. Exactly. No more swapping pads every panel. No. I remember those days, and they're great. I get it, look, I get it. But saving time is a beautiful thing. Uh, there's a lot of things out there that we could be doing. Detailing is a part of that. Yeah. But you know, then there's like friends and family and kids and other life enriching experiences. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't miss the 40 hour paint correction job. No, and you know, driving these things is almost as fun as cleaning them. 
and so, they drive faster when they're clean. So yeah, spend time oh, doing yeah, that. Definitely. Versus, yeah. You get yeah. better uh, miles per gallon. They drive faster. For sure. More horsepower when a car is clean. Uh, the DIY Detail podcast is nearing 100 episodes. If you want to check out some more of them, we have a link to the full catalog right here.